my name is Caridad and I'm a registered behavior technician in the state of Florida. In today's video, I'm actually going to be discussing what I wish I knew before becoming an RVT. These are some key points I think is important for those of you that are interested in the field or in the process of becoming an RVT to know. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. still not done so the thing with that is once you pass your board you get your results right away so you'll know right on the spot right after you turn in your exam if you pass or you failed so if you pass congratulations and you're an RBT so now you can totally start applying to agencies and start that whole process just I want to make something very clear to you guys you will not be getting your clients immediately after getting hired it's a process, especially if you, especially, yeah, especially if you're a new RBT, because there's some things you need. You actually need to get your national provider number and your Medicaid ID. You need a Medicaid ID if you're going to be working with private insurances, but a lot of cases do require Medicaid, and that takes a little bit of time. I personally took around two to two and a half months before getting my first client from passing my test and getting hired to actually starting my first session. So that's something you guys need to keep in mind. Don't expect this uh, once you're hired to immediately get a client and start working. It's a little bit of a process. And now with everything going on, I'm not sure how the process has been affected. It might take a little bit longer. I'm not sure about that. You guys need to keep in mind, you're not gonna directly go straight to your first client once you get hired. There's a couple things you actually need to learn in the process. Remember, you're actually going to have to do some shadowing, at least in my case. Take advantage of the shadowing. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity for you to actually watch an RBT and be in a session, just observing and being able to ask questions and see how, how an RBT can handle different behaviors, how they take notes, how they take data, all of that that goes into a session. So really take advantage of shadowing and the more shadowing you can do, the better. It really helps out and um, it makes you less nervous for your first session. You have to renew your certification every year. So once you pass your board, you pass the hard part. Once you get hired, you get your first client, you start working. It's awesome, but you have to do it again in a year. You don't have to take the board don't worry but you do have to redo your competency assessment with your supervising behavior analyst so you have to send all those documents in before your license expires which is usually the i believe the same day that you pass your test that's once your that's when your certification like officially starts so keep that in mind i, I think there's a small fee with that but yeah, you are going to have to recertify every year in order to be an active practitioner and be able to have clients. Okay, so one big misconception I think people have of ABA is that we only work with kids. Actually, we work with a whole variety of age groups from young toddlers to elementary school age, middle school, high school, college, adults. So we work with a variety of people and you need to be able to adapt to those different environments and be prepared to have a whole variety of age groups. When in doubt, go to your behavior plan. So if you're in a session and you're feeling overwhelmed, a behavior has come up and you're just like going on, look at your behavior plan. Your behavior plan is there to guide you. It is made by your analyst and it tells you exactly what you need to do with the maladaptive behaviors that are coming up, how to prevent them, what to do if they actually happen, and what to do after they happen. So all they're there for you, I always recommend to have it either on your iPad or tablet, physically with you in paper. Always review it before starting with a client, just so you have an idea of what to do when these situations come up, because they will come up. That's why we're there. So I highly, highly recommend when you're in doubt, look at your behavior plan. It's there for you to help guide you and to help you really know what you're doing and have an effective session. Next thing, it's okay if your client doesn't like you at first. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's true. 
once you start placing demands after the week of building rapport and you actually start running your trials and placing demands correcting behaviors having them do this having them do that they might not like you for a little bit because you're bringing all these new things that they're either not used to or just don't like to do so you might not have the best reaction at first but eventually trust me hang on there they will like you they will have a bond with you and your sessions will get so much better but it always has to go a little bit low before it gets to the good part so don't be frustrated just try your best and just know you're doing your best and just trying to improve their life so just keep that in mind and even though it gets hard just be positive okay, so the next thing is something i actually struggled with um when i first became an rbt and that was asking my analyst questions so i was very shy and kind of scared to ask my analyst questions because i didn't want to seem like i didn't know what i was doing or annoying basically but your analyst is there to help you they are essentially a resource for you to use to help guide you through your through your sessions if you need any tools if you're like i'm stuck i don't know what to do about this they can help you through that so when in doubt besides getting your behavior plan you contact your analyst they're gonna be there to help you they're the ones that created the plan that have really studied the behaviors that needed to be worked on what we need to do so please contact your analyst and they will help you out with any questions you have okay, the next thing i want to talk about is actually planning but planning and being flexible which can be a little hard sometimes but let me explain what i mean so as an rbt you can have pretty long sessions with just one client four to five hours so you need to plan beforehand what activities are you gonna do during the that time so for session starts at 10 in the morning from 10 to 11 what are you gonna do what activity do you have plans for the day so a plan really helps you make, stay on task know what activities you're gonna do and not just stand and be like okay what did i do now you know you want to make sure that you use your time with the clients wisely and that you're effectively implementing the behavior plan and running the programs and all that second you need to plan but again be flexible don't either have an idea but don't if something happens don't freak out like oh no i'm not gonna finish the plan i had i'm not gonna do this activity i'm not gonna do this there's situations where you just can't control either the client can have a massive tantrum that its duration is i don't know an hour or just different things that can come up so don't be too square either be a little flexible if one activity can't happen it's okay we move on to the next one and we work on the next thing try to plan definitely because this will help your sessions run smoothly and you have a clear idea of what your goal is for that session but also be prepared for for things it's life you know i hope you all enjoyed this video and found it either informative or learn something new today i hope that i got my message across and maybe made you guys aware of some things you didn't know before so i also want to let you guys know that i'm going to be linking the bacb website down below here's where you can find um what the competency assessment is going to be like what credentials you need in order to apply for either of the positions i mentioned today and you can also see what BCBAs in your area are supervising and all of that. So if you have any questions, you can probably find the answers in that website. And if not, you can always comment or message me on my Instagram right here. And I'll gladly answer any questions you guys have. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And please subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content from me. And give me a thumbs up and a comment with future content you guys would be interested in watching. Whether it's ABA content, grad school, or anything else you guys are interested in. I would gladly make more videos. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!